Hey, hi everyone, good morning. Hi, welcome back in again. Just let me recheck one more time the connection. Okay. All looks good. Great. Namaste. Very good morning. Welcome back to level two. So, as we all know that it's a 60 minutes class and uh, one of the students, quite a few of them actually asked me that, can we do a longer class instead of a 60 minute? And the matter of fact is that we are doing live both on IG and Facebook and especially on IG, uh, usually the live video can go on only for an hour and then it automatically gets cut off. So we'll be keeping it limited to 60 minutes. However, it's going to be a good effective practice which combines all sources of your strength, flexibility in all dimension. Again, as I always say, choose the right option because when we are doing online practices, there is nobody as such, the teacher to guide us to what to do, when to take a break and be sincere to yourself. We all are pretty experienced practitioners if you're in a level two. And then from move on, uh, choosing the option which feels good, take a break when necessary. But here we all are here to work hard, so let's give it a push. And if you have done my classes before for a level two, you might know that I have a kind of like a slow flow to begin up with. We create a harmony. We try to create that bond in between the body, mind and breath as we start up the practice with some slow meditation and pranayama, followed by some awareness creating postures. But due to the limitation of the time, we'll be doing a slight modified flow. And uh, again, that's going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, this is something which I personally do for my practice when I have got limited time. So enjoy the practice with me and uh, let's give it a good push. Thank you. Let's get started. Um, Namaste. So for a level two, let's uh, quickly heat up our core and the back. These are the two very important essential components we want to target in order to make sure that the body is ready and it feels lighter. Okay, so coming on the back, we start with a low Navasana. So set your sacrum down to the floor, lift up the legs around uh, 20 degrees off the floor and we go for one minute over here. And I would suggest you to stay here, checking that there isn't any arch in between the back and the floor. So you want to really seal everything down, creating a nice strong compression. If you want, and if you like to get a challenge, bring the arms up along with the ears. Keep squeezing those legs in. The neck feels heavy, but have your arms supporting the back of the head. 30 seconds. Recheck once again, the lower back and the floor, sealed together, feet are active, legs super strong. Let's do it for the last 10 seconds here. Five. And stretch down forward, come all the way up, cross the legs, step back, and let's now do a couple of back strengthening. So come down on your belly. Your arms could be next to the ribs, they could be drawn back with the fingers interlocked, whichever position the hands feels good. We'll be doing a couple of locust lifts, so inhale, lift the chest and legs up, exhale, set them down. One minute of this. Feel all the back muscles getting fully engaged. The glutes, the hamstrings, especially the lower back. I'm squeezing those shoulder blades to try and build in the heat around the mid and upper back region as well. Check that the legs are strong as we are done with half of the length of this move. 
squeeze us straight, feet are active. Okay, this time, as you go up, hold it for 10 more seconds. Legs are active, squeeze those legs into the midline. Keep the chest high, keep the lift off your thighs. For three, reach up, two, reach up, and one, relax. Come back up. Let's do a couple of shoulder taps to quickly warm up the wrist and shoulder joint. Tug your arm shoulder for distance, tuck the toes under, lift the legs up, and keep the feet separated at the hip width. And we're going for 20, and in the given length of time, do as many as it feels comfortable. So let's begin. Speed is a key, keep the core engaged. 10. Okay, see set. Bring the knees down to the floor. Scoop the tailbone, shift forward. We go for five knee push ups. One. Two, three, four, and five. Down the facing dog. Two breaths. Gaze forward, step or jump forward. Fall forward, bend the knee slightly. Utkatasana, reach up and help. Sama City here, relax itself. Now separate the feet around the hip width distance. We'll be doing 20 half squats. So as you're doing the squats, check that your knee stays behind the toes pretty early stage. So still focusing on the quads to work out. So check that the thighs gets parallel to the ground as we sing. So let's go, inhale, exhale. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And one. The next one is one of my favorite moves. So again, when I have limited time, I usually go for some explosive practice, pushing it strong at the beginning, create a lots of heat, which helps to ease up and make the rest of the body and the flow feels lighter. So these are called the burpees. If you do my classes, probably you know. And we're gonna do 10 of that again. In the given amount of time, you can do less or more. So focus on the lift of the jump. You want to bring the knees high to the chest. Take a jump back in Chaturanga, jump forward and repeat. Let's go for 10 of these. Two. Three. Four, five, keep pushing the speed, six, seven, eight, almost there, nine, all right, set it down. Let's go back in a down dog. Relax. Take a few deep breaths here. Don't have to work hard to get those heels down. Soften out the legs. Take another two more breaths. forward, now I've been to standing, the arms are pretty warmed up, let's focus on the legs, we'll be going for 30 full squats, 
choose an option to go for half squat. Let's go. Hip distance legs. Inhale. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Twenty. Last ten. One. Two. Three. Four. Keep going. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And the last one. Ten. Finishing off. Take a down dog. Once again, breathe on it. Switch out those legs. So if you want to paddle out, release the Achilles. Set the knees down, widen them, and take a child's pose. And for your child's pose, see which position helps the breath to get stable. When I'm breathing heavy, like right now, I think you can hear my breath. I prefer to keep my knees wide, so I have body enough space for expansion of the chest. Take two more breaths here. Okay, so the next move we do is the tiger push-up. Now these are pretty challenging because it incorporates very deep muscles of your triceps. So I'll be demonstrating one for you. And uh, you might just want to go for one side, not return back as your option. The most easiest version, you might just want to do a few push-ups instead of going tiger push-ups. So we come into a dolphin, have a look first before starting. We shift forward, we stay low, we go in chaturanga, we go back with the butts and push again in a dolphin into a dog. Going forward is easy, pushing back with the hips still staying high can be quite challenging. And just try one line of approach, take a break, repeat that for five times, or just come together with me. Let's go. Five, dog, dolphin, chaturanga, dolphin, dog, one, dolphin, chaturanga, dolphin, dog, two, dolphin, chaturanga, Dolphin, dog three, dolphin, chaturanga, dolphin, four, dolphin, chaturanga, dolphin, five, hold this, and a few deep breaths again. Now this time, reach the right leg up, bend and open it out to the left side. Go ahead and take a wild thing from there. It and it's the way it works for you. Some of us like to go deeper backbend. I like to keep it this way. Again, your personal preference. Engage through the feet, we'll lift the butts up. Return back in a simple down dog, so set back the right foot. Take a breath in. Switch side, lift your left leg up, bend it open to the right, hold it. And then flip that over, wild thing, right leg extended on the ball of the left foot as we reach high up with the hips, gazing towards the upper round thumb. And then the thumb back, dog. 
Vinyasa, plank, inhale, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Two more breaths. Butts high, shoulders wide, legs engaged. Gaze forward, step or jump forward. Lend and inhale, fold forward, exhale. Wrap your arms back, interlock the fingers, stretch the shoulders, bend the knees slightly to ease up. Release, come up and standing. Let's work on a little bit more deeper with our squatting position. However, this time we transit in between a leg balance, which is a warrior three, down to a one leg squat. Let's try five of this. So, starting up, extend your left leg, shoot it back, warrior three. Come up, palms in prayer. Now wrap that same left leg behind your right calf. Squat down as much as you can, full range if you can. And push it back up. Go to warrior three. One, bend. Go down if you have a pistol squat, full range. Go back up, two, extend. Bend, wrap it back, squat down. Almost lost there, come back up. Three, two more. Bend, lower down deep. Come back, extend, burning legs. Four, one more. Bend, lower fully down and push back up. Warrior three, for four, three a bit wobbly, two, and one, relax the hand. Sit back the left foot, straighten the right leg. If you have got a block, use it underneath the ball of your front foot. So you're getting that extra bit of flexion on the ankle, lend and inhale, and then exhale, fold over, rest. Three more slow breaths. All right, lift halfway, step the block aside. Step your left foot forward, come up in standing. Other side now, let's go. Kick back the right leg, warrior three. Bring it in, palms in prayer. Wrap the right leg back, go down, squat, up and back, one, go in, wrap and down, up, two, extend back, bend, wrap it back, same fully, and up, two more, extend, three, bend, Squat, try a bit deeper this time. And push back. Extend. One more to go. Bend, reach down, sink low, sink low, sink low, and all the way up. Push back. For five, four, don't touch. Three, two, and relax. Oh, the last ones were quite kidding. Lift the ball of the foot. Pyramid. Back leg straight, angle that inwards, sink down into the right hip bone. So you're drawing the left femur back and then exhale, fold over. Soften the breathing. Lift halfway, step that out, step back in a dog. Rest, five breath. Nice and long dog, reaching out those sit bones.
Bring your knees down. Sit down into a hero pose. Now we'll be working with a 90 seconds of Shiv Sasana, headstand pose. Uh, depending on your foundation, depending on your experience, go ahead, choose a wall to take a headstand if it works. You can just choose to be in a half headstand if you are still working towards building up the fall. And if you're someone experienced, you might choose a 90 seconds Pinchamayrasana. Feel free to come down at any point of time. Keep squeezing those legs in, ribs are in, so core is engaged. Let's go. So set up a shoulder with distance elbow, crown of the head resting down, tuck again, and bring it up. Shoulders wide, getting that straight line. Squeeze those legs. Feel the lightness. Stay with me. Finish is 30 seconds. One third done. Good time to recheck your core. It tends to be a banana around this point of time if we have just started learning to get those ribs in. Shoulders away from the ears. So avoid using those trapeze too much. Last 30 seconds. to descend down with control. Rest in a child's pose. As you're resting that, let's have a bit of modification. Make a fist with the right under, left on top. Rest your forehead down. Widen the knees and sink the chest a little down towards the ground. So creating a bit of extension with the neck. Feels good on the neck. One more deep breath. Okay, slowly sit back up. Let's give a break to our upper body as we work on with some hamstring. So Hanuman Asana, I personally prefer to have blocks next to me because I can focus equally on my hamstring and the hip flexor of the back leg. So we'll be taking in two blocks. Let's step the right foot forward first. Now, as the right heel goes towards the top of the mat, tuck the left toes under, lift the left knee and send it back. Let's do that again. Tuck the left toes, lift the left knee, send it back. And walk the block back. So I'm having that vertical line. Do it one more time. Lift the knee, push it back as you're sinking down. And then check if you wish to have a block underneath the hips. To keep the front leg steady, the front foot flexed and engaged. If you need to take that block away, do so. I do it usually on my second or third attempt, it feels more ready. You feel you have enough room, draw that left hip bone forwards, pull back the right femur, and that incorporates more hip flexor. Okay, push and return back up. We'll switch sides. So now, 
stepping the left foot forward. Tuck the right toes, push it back. Slide your left foot all the way to the top, as far as it can go. And once again, tuck the back knee up, push it behind, get the spine vertical. And feel free to use any edges of the block which works for you. Once again, back knee up, sink it back and down. Taking a block again if required. I feel I can do that one more time, so let's try. Lift the back knee, shift it back and sink. And eventually, you want to flatten the back foot. Front foot active and flexed. And again, taking this moment to draw the right hip forwards, pull back the left, and then try sinking low. Two more breaths. Push and press on back. Take your blocks aside. Okay, now since we have got some break from our upper body, let's go back to revisit again. So we all know a side crow. We'll be doing that. Option is to hold a 20 second side crow. If you're experienced, go ahead for a tripod headstand and descend back down into a side crow. For those of us who are working uh, new into this pose, uh, there are two ways of doing that. One is you're working with the upper arm always close to the knee, remember. You want the hips to be staying more far towards the side, not touching though, but always close to the knee is a contact point. The higher you're up on the upper arm, the safer it is because it doesn't slip down. So instead of trying to have the elbow in and resting the hip, try to keep the elbow and the ribs along with the hip away by at least three to four inches so somewhere up here. This might take time to lift one foot and then the second and that's fine. Keep working just one foot, tiptoeing with the other leg and staying here is good. It builds up strength on the opposite side of the arm instead of just dumping in and resting the full thing. So let's go. So begin with the legs out to our right side. So getting that armpit closing across, close towards my knee, not towards my hip. Shoulder with distance hand, I shift and I reach in. Maybe a tripod headstand, maybe just 20 seconds I crook. Try your best not to let go. If you're on your tripods, time to come back in again. Hold that. For four, three, two, chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Rest there for a couple of breaths before we switch side. Face forward, step up, jump forward. Get seated. Ready. Another side. Legs out to my left. I take my left upper arm over towards the armpit, out on the side of the knee. Shifting and lifting. Maybe one foot, maybe try bond. You're on those tripod, descend. So we need for five, four, three, two. Shadowrun. Up dog. And down dog. Face forward, step or jump forward. Fold over, exhale. Good guitars and inhale. Summer city, exhale. Separate the feet, relax for a few breaths. Close your eyes. Right. 
let's start with the next part. It's a standing sequence. We'll just work on three different poses, two on the legs, one back on the arms. So we'll start with the right foot on the floor, lift the left leg up, either grab hold of the toe or the heel and extend out. If you have got a greater range, you might as well want to go into a Dandaman Trivikramasana. So grabbing your upper ankle with the right arm. Bend the leg, come into a half lotus, so rest that foot nice and high up on top. Palms in prayer, raise arms up, inhale, exhale, fold forward. Your left arm can wrap across the back to reach the big toe, or can just simply stay down over here. halfway. Bend that bottom leg. Now I'll take a break over here to explain you to the next pose. We'll be doing a grass hopper and we're going to draw number four. Have a quick look before we take that in a sequence. I want your foot, the toes to just stay above the knee. Your foot is one unit, your thigh is another unit and this entire unit should be rested and twisted to be on top of the opposite upper arm. So my left foot is on top of my left upper arm, my right foot is on top of the same arm. The key is to try and mount it high. Again, don't worry if you can't get it, simply repeat a side crow. A grass hopper incorporates a lots of external hip opening as well as oblique strength, arm strength. You can take the hip opening component away from it and simply focus on just arms and obliques doing a side crow. Fair enough for that to start with. So let's go. Set it up, bend, twist, twist nice and deep, reach the hands out, shift and go. If you can, then extend the bottom leg. If not, just keep it bent, it's easy that way. Five, four, three, two, set it down. Come up and standing. You might want to try that out a couple of more times during your set practice. Let's start with the other side. Left leg rounded, right leg is up. Heel, toe, work whichever feels good. It's an out, hold. Trivikramasana is your option. Bend, reach up. Palms in prayer. Inhale, raise arms up. Exhale, bend forward. Reach into the big toe, or simply stay here. All right, bend the bottom leg, slide the upper foot down. So now your toes are in the same line as your left knee. Twisting out towards the left side, reaching the left thigh and the right foot on top of our right upper arm. Shifting, leaning into it and holding it for 10. Straighten the bottom leg if you can. Five, four, three, two, and bring it down. Up and standing and relax. Get seated please. Lie down for a moment. Let's take a short Shavasana here. Close your eyes. Soften all the muscle groups which might be feeling heavy now. Let's do a little bit of uh, shoulder opening, 
before getting in for some backward bending poses. So let's set up, have a quick look. Once again, you want to have two blocks. Set the blocks at the lowest edge to begin with. I'll be keeping, if you have an outer block, take that one. If you don't have, just make a fist. So we'll be coming up on our knees. We'll have the elbows resting in the center of the block. We'll walk the legs back like we do an Ashtanga Namaskar. And walking behind, we try sinking the chest down towards the ground. Now feel free to walk the knees back to the point. It feels a good stretch on the shoulder. And as well, partly those armpits, upper back. There's no specific rule about how far my knees can walk back. The more it walks back, the more the chest sinks down. However, again, check with your shoulders. How does that feel? The intention here is to release the shoulders, preparing ourselves up into a Uddha Vadanvasana. So maybe I'll walk a little bit more to let my chest sink. And that feels good. Push down into the block. Walk in. Take the block aside. Setu Bandhasana. Once again, using block. If you don't have one, use the hands. Bend the legs. Bring the block underneath the sacrum. Walk the legs straight. So stretching into the lumbar. Legs the foot. Engage the legs nice and strong and let it stretch for a while. Bend the legs, lift up the hip, twist it out to the side. Right. Now, the thing with the, a wheel pose is it is a combination of lots of different muscle groups. Especially, this is a tough posture for men. And if you have got limited range of motion on the shoulder, there is usually quite lots of tension around the wrist. And uh, what we try working on with is a lot more shoulder opening, such as this pose. There are many more. You can actually work on a couple of series of different shoulder openings which we can talk in another day or bring it as a part of our class on one of these weeks. And the second is, of course, the spinal curvature. And uh, if you have got limitation on both of these, this can be quite a challenging posture. So any teachers watching out there can also notice that sometimes we get students in the class who are super flexible, especially the girls. And for the men, this can be quite a tough pose. So. There are a couple of things which we can actually do in order to make it feel a bit more comfortable, especially on the wrist. Remember, if your back and your shoulder takes a lot of load, it's going to eventually feel fine. But when the wrist takes a lot of load, gradually it starts to become a habit. And because of this wrist pain, we are unable to reach into not just a wheel, but also lots of unbalancing asana. So just a tip which I want to give you all with a demonstration. Could you please come over? So have a quick look as my student demonstrates his pose, lying down on the back. As so setting the palms right underneath the shoulder heads, hug the elbows in. You want to keep the feet parallel. Step one, lift the hips up. Step two, the crown of the head comes down on the ground. Stay there, hug the elbows in and go all the way up. So step two was the head on the floor and some of us might still want to stay in the same point without lifting the head up as a preparation. Now watch the angle of her wrist. So they're pretty much at uh, like 85 degree, I would say. Now if she's having limitation around the upper back and shoulder, probably her range would be here. And it, that is when you're gonna start putting a lot of tension on the wrist. Now the key is trying to use the quads to push back into the feet, letting the chest to move towards the opposite side. Now see how her wrist angle changes. Now again, go back to the previous point, too much on the wrist, now engage the legs and start pushing it all the way out. And that also feels good around the shoulders and the upper back. And then lie down slowly. 
We'll be doing this for three sets and 30 seconds each set. If you're experienced, choose any variations of your choice. Ready, take a deep breath in. Set your hands and let's come up. So you can break down or come straight into the pose. 30 seconds starts. And check if you wish to walk the feet in towards the hands. If you have good room, do so. The heels staying up would be easier to handle the load of the body. Staying in for another 15 more seconds. Maybe the heels are down now. Maybe it's still up. The last five. Hug those knees in, check the legs engagement, and then come back down slowly. You can walk out of the feet to begin with and rest. Rest in a butterfly, and this form helps to keep a natural spinal curve. Take a couple of deep breaths and we will be doing two more rounds of this. Okay, let's set the legs in. Position your hands, hug the elbows in and bring it up. Once again, send the range out into the chest. So let the angle of the wrist improve. And then you want to walk starting from the other foot towards the palm. Always keep changing. So it helps us to build the balance between the right and left. Maybe staying there or maybe taking one more step. The second round feels a bit lighter usually. Push into those legs again, send out the chest, open up the armpits and bring the heels down if you can. And if you have room, last four, arms are straight and then step out the feet and come back down. And rest for another 30 seconds. Final round of this pose, let's try getting for a 45 seconds hold. Take a few deep breaths in. A lot of you are experienced practitioners. You might want to try it out from a standing in a drop back or just press up. Maybe trying one leg up, maybe trying one hand up variation, maybe a forearm wheel. So see what works for your body type at this stage right now. Take a deep breath. And getting ready, set those legs, set your palms, and let's come up. Once again, send out the energy into the chest, begin to walk the feet. Again, weaker side first, I would say. Holding it, take a few breaths. Now this time, instead of walking the feet, try and walk your palms and see if that feels a bit heavier. If your arms are strong, it shouldn't be feeling very heavy. And as we are holding it for 20 more seconds, walk one more time if you still have a space. So trying to really reduce that gap. And finally, heels are down, send the chest out fully as the knees are hugging in. Send the chest out, send the chest out. Like you want to really get those knees straighter out. Great, walk out and lie down. Give a gentle hug to your legs this time. I want to roll side to side a couple of times. And take a turn around on your right side and lie down on your belly. We'll be doing two rounds of bow. Dhanurasana. Take a deep breath in. Bend the knees now, grab in the ankle. Keep those feet at the hips with distance from each other. On the next breath, push the legs and come up. Keep the feet separated around the hip with distance. It's a little bit more challenging when the legs are close. So again, your choice of what works for you. Finding that extension of your hip joint, engaging the legs nicely, rolling the shoulders to open, lift the head, keep the neck soft, and go for one last push higher up, everything engaging upwards. And then come back down. Release, turn your head to the right side and take a couple of deep breaths. Intermediate advanced students, your next round can be a full bow. Of course, the basic option would be a bow, trying to hug those feet closer to each other and aiming at better height. Let's go. Around the chin, bend the knees, grab in the ankle. On the next breath, push and up we go. And head is high, legs are engaged, chest is open. Engage the legs more. 20 more seconds. Legs starts to feel that burning sensation. 
squeeze in the legs, lift up the legs high. Last 10, squeeze in the feet closer, lift the legs higher, strong quads, high head, soft neck, and bring it back down. Turn your head to the opposite side with a couple of more breaths. And then press back into a child's pose. Widen the knees and take a couple of deep breaths in there. Come up into sitting. Change of model gives me a break. It's a lot more easy to breathe now. Let's take in a Supta Virasana. Walk the legs into the top of the mat. Open the feet, roll out the calves. Ground the sitting bones. Let's see again, if you need a block to elevate up the seats, check the knees and ankle. If that's comfortable, proceed to a reclined position. Arms overhead, grab the toes and elbows. Advanced backbenders, you might want to have some fun pressing up into a baby wheel or a couple of asana here for a short hold as we're holding it for around a minute. Join back us up again when you have done your practice. seconds around. Bring the palms back to the feet. Press down the elbows to sit up. And stretch the legs out forward. Hold the ankle a few times. Facing forwards now. Upa Vishta Konasana. Seated wide angle pose. Take it to your own comfort level. It doesn't have to be 180s unless it feels natural that way. Right. Raise the right hand up in hell. Reach out to your left foot, exhale. And let your left arm extend from to create space. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, switch. Inhale. Exhale, switch again. Inhale, exhale, switch. In, out. In, out. In, out and we hold it. Try and have that left shoulder of yours coming closer and forward. It's more of a lateral line, stretching the obliques. Your left arm can be on your ribs. It can hold the inner arch of your left foot. The key is to open up the ribs, open up the upper shoulder. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, switch. And work harder on your less dominant side. My left has always been my weakest side as for flexibility is concerned. Open that left shoulder up and back. Coming back out. 
relax arms forward. See if you could widen the angle of the legs. And then bow forwards, folding from the hips. Hands can reach out to the big toes, they can stretch forward. You can make a soft pillow with the palms one on top of another, resting the forehead higher. Keep those feet active, spine long. It's time to focus on softening your breathing. Slowly palms next to the ribs, push yourself back up. Hug the legs. Face back towards the side again. Let's do a Paschimottanasana here. Let's see if you wish to have a block and hold it across your feet, depending on the length of your arms, your torso and legs. Flex the feet and help reach arms up. Exhale, fold. Move the body halfway. Now separate the feet, place them as wide as the mat is, and sink down in between the inner thighs for the next minute. Gurmasana, tortoise pose, is an option here if you want to have a deeper spinal flexion. The key is to be relaxed and grounded as you begin to cool down. Legs are steady, spine is long, exhalations are long. Final five breaths. See if it feels natural to try and find a better depth. Slowly inhale, push yourself back and up. Paschim Uttanasana. Paschim is the west side of the body, or the back side of the body, because the sun rises from the east. Urva is the east, or the front of the body. So after stretching the back, which is the west of the Paschim, we stretch the front, which is the Purva. So that is why this pose is called the counter practice of Paschim Uttanasana, because it opens the front of the body and also engages the hamstring and the glutes, which are just stretching for the time being when we were in the forward fold. So feet together, a tabletop by bending legs can be an easier option. Hands behind the butts around half a feet. Push down, lift up, relax neck. Open shoulders, legs engaged, traction on the spine. Inhale, high lift. Exhale, set it down. Lie down on your back. Bend the legs, take an eagle with your right leg on top, bring the legs down to the left side and the head to the right side. Center 
Switch side. Taking another leg. Bring it down. to center, hug the legs all up and sitting. So thank you once again for joining me in today for a level two. I will also send over the link of YouTube for this class which you can follow up for the next week. Um, I'll be also having alternate days 10.30 a.m. classes and PR's channel uh, both in IGN Facebook so feel free to subscribe then and also there are lots of great teachers as we're offering online classes from Pure so stay tuned to their channels too so much to learn even we are just home uh, and even if we are not meeting in together it's a strength the power of the community which keeps our love bonded so stay happy and healthy I hope you enjoyed this morning a long Shavasana is recommended you can do some self practice because the body is ready followed by a Shavasana. And for the time being, just close your eyes for a moment as I'll be closing out with the next few seconds of Gong.